Hey there, Will Gibbons here, and it's been a minute since I checked in. If you are a regular viewer of the channel, things might look and sound a little bit different, and that's because I'm in a new location. Uh, I'm gonna share some updates first, just some personal updates. We can catch back up since it's been a while for me. I also wanna run through some big key shot news that recently dropped, and I wanna run through three of my favorite key shot features that are in the newest version, 2024.2, which also just dropped yesterday. So today's gonna to be a bit of a mixed bag video. Go ahead and use the chapters down below if you wanna to jump to a specific section of this video. So as far as my updates go, basically I moved. I was in Southern California, now I'm in Utah, just south of Salt Lake City, and it's been a lot of fun. I've been enjoying getting to know the area, getting out hiking with the dog, and just enjoying life. Part of moving is getting all this stuff set up. The office around me, um, while it might look simple on camera, there's a lot of stuff that you can't see. Some of the gear is a little different than what I was using. And so it's just gonna take me a while to dial all that into my liking and make sure it's as good as it can be. If you have any questions or wanna see any of the gear I'm using, maybe I'll do a future video where I kind of do an office update tour. I'm trying to get back into my regular cadence of videos where I run through tutorials and things like that. Um, it might take me a few more weeks to do that. But again, it's high on my priority list and I am definitely eager to get back into YouTube. So I mentioned some big Keyshot news. We'll go ahead and reference the website. If you go to keyshot.com, you'll see a new website along with a fairly overhauled visual identity. They have made updates to their logo as well as some variations to it. There are two other products as well listed on their website in addition to the main rendering tool we've been using for a long time. And these are listed on their website as Keyshot Hub and Keyshot Doc. We also have Keyshot Studio, which replaces the Keyshot rendering software that we've been um, using. Now I wanna make clear that the actual product, Keyshot, the rendering software hasn't changed. I'm really just referring to how they name it and how they refer to it. So in the future, if I mention Studio, I'm referring to Keyshot Studio, and that's technically the new name of it going forward. I will probably have videos on Keyshot Hub and Keyshot Doc because these are pretty big uh, updates and software uh, products that they've been working on. So I think it only makes sense to cover them in some capacity on this channel at some point. Now let's go ahead and move on to the updates for Keyshot 2024.2. Okay, so the first feature I'm excited about in Keyshot 2024.2 is a depth slider for textures with cylindrical mapping. On this bottle, we have two labels and you'll notice that they're not casting either any reflections or shadows into the bottle. This used to be an issue, and I actually have a whole separate tutorial on how to achieve this using an earlier version of Keyshot with Ray Mask. If I double click on this material and get into its material graph so we can see what's happening, we got a whole bunch of nodes. But if I zoom on in, we have this one called Ray Mask that was used to get rid of all sorts of extra reflections going on from these. Let me go ahead and just delete that so we don't have it. Now you can see what it looks like without it. We have this distracting reflection where the logo and this label are reflected inside the bottle. So the way we would fix that now using the new depth slider is to go into say the texture that I have right here, this node, and you'll see there's a depth slider set to zero. In Keyshot, that means it's going to basically be infinite so let me go ahead and type in one millimeter and hit enter, and you'll see that reflection basically disappears right away. I can also find the label here that we used, double click on that. It also now, because it's in cylindrical mode, has a depth slider, and we'll set this to one, and I'll hit enter, and once again, that annoying kind of reflection goes away. Now there is a bit of a shadow cast inside here, and I honestly think that's probably the way it's supposed to be, because light itself, would not penetrate through this label. Thus, it would create a shadow on the inside layer of glass, basically. If you don't want that, if you're being really, really like nitpicky and you don't want any of that, then you would go ahead and use the technique I showed in a previous tutorial with that ray mask. But the fact that we now have a depth slider for cylindrically mapped textures, to me is a big time saver and it's something I've been wanting for years. So I'm really happy that Keyshot added that. The next feature is a lot smaller, but again, I think it makes a huge difference when it comes to quality of life. Automatic material switching within the material graph. What does that mean? Let's say I wanna go and edit 
the material on the backdrop here. If I double click on it, watch what happens in the material graph window. It actually updates. You can see I'm using a plastic transparent material with a color gradient on this backdrop. So this is just a piece of geometry, this backdrop, but I have these textures on it. And so by double clicking on a new material within the scene, you actually get the material graph to update. I love that we can now seamlessly switch between materials. This will save me quite a bit of time, even if it seems like a tiny little feature. The last one I'm gonna call out has to do with the move tool. We use the move tool all the time. For the move tool, we can now hover our mouse over an object and hit Control D on the keyboard, and that will select whatever is underneath your mouse. That's great. But I can actually now hover over a new item and hit Control D to, to get out of that, and then it will and hit it again to now select a different object. This was not the case before. So that makes for really fast switching with the keyboard and allowing you to select different objects really quickly. But it gets better than that. Let's say I wanna move or rotate or scale this. So T is for translate. I can hit T on the keyboard and it will bring up the move tool. I can hit R and that will bring up the rotation tool. And if I hit S, it'll bring up the scale tool. And that may be a little hard to see on screen. Let me change the angle and zoom in so we can see this a bit better. But yeah, R for rotate, T for translate, and S for scale, which is really awesome. But we can go further than that. If I go to T for translate, and I want to move it in the Z direction, I'll hit Z on the keyboard, and now, with no clicking, it is going to follow my cursor. If I wanna move it in the Y direction, I just go ahead and hit Y, and now I can move it in the Y direction. Same thing for X, I can move it in the X direction. Now, if you're not sure of which direction to move it in, if you look at the Move tool here on the right, we've got red, green, and blue color-coded axes, you could also click on those uh, radial buttons if you preferred, but we can do them with the keyboard, which I say is worth getting used to just because it's gonna save you a lot of time. And once it becomes intuitive, it's gonna be a big time saver. So I love that we can go ahead and move all these very easily just by tapping a different key. But we can also go into a new tool like rotate and it's going to keep the cube where it was, which is really great. And now if I want to rotate along the X axis, I just hit X. And there we go, we're rotating. And if I want to rotate in the Z axis, go ahead and hit Z and now we're moving. So this is doing a lot to reduce the number of clicks, which will uh, help save your tendons, you know, um, from like RSI, as well as just speeding up your workflow. And when you get used to knowing that X, Y, and Z correlate to red, green, and blue, it's going to help give you a nice, fast, intuitive workflow. And as far as uh, scale goes. Again, I can go to S and I can start scaling along, say, the X axis. Boom, we can do that. Or we can scale along the Y axis, up and down. Now, there is no keyboard shortcut to go to proportional scaling, like in the middle there. You'll still have to click for that. There's no way to use the keyboard only to snap to a local axis. I think that might be a feature they, they would consider in the, in the future. But for now, this is still a pretty big upgrade. The last thing I wanna show you here, I'm gonna go ahead and close our material window and hit um, O for the geometry view, just to prove out a point. We also now have infinite scroll, at least that's what it's being called. So for example, if I wanna translate or move this cube up, I'll go ahead and hit T and Y, and I can start moving it up along its axis. Looks like it's moving along its global axis, um, or local, I should say. If I go into global, it should move. So if I move my mouse to the top of the screen, even though my mouse gets to the top of the screen, watch the bottom of my screen. See how my cursor starts moving from the bottom up? And same thing from the bottom. It'll, it'll go from one end of the screen to the other, resulting in a nice smooth, continual movement. And if you look on the left in the geometry view, you'll see that it continues, the object continues to move as long as my mouse is moving which is really handy. The scenario I can think of where this makes a lot of sense, and you'll know if you've run into this before, but if you're working with an object that is say kind of like long and skinny and the uh, move tool is aligned with the middle of that object, but you're zoomed way on in and you wanna just move the very end of that skinny object, then you can use this infinite scrolling to help place that on screen in a way that is a lot easier than um, using the geometry view alone. Hopefully I've explained that in a way that makes sense. Now on the release notes, Keyshot lists these features I just shared with you as improvements uh, or feature updates, but honestly to me, they're big enough to be actual features because 
they improve the quality of life a lot. Um, so I hope you enjoy those uh, updates as much as I do. Um, I'll make sure to include links for the release notes for Keyshot 2024.3 down below. And if you like updates like this, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Otherwise, subscribe to my email list. That's always a safe bet. I'll find a way to link that down below as well. And until next time, happy rendering.